Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Stanley's hidden nail plane is really kind of cute, but it's only a quarter inch wide. And if you really want to hide a screw, you need something bigger. So today we're going to make a happy little plane. So this is the smallest little Stanley plane and I have a video um, showing how this actually works. And you put a quarter inch chisel in there and it's designed to create a little shaving where you can hide a nail behind it. But we use screws nowadays and uh, it's harder to fit a screw behind a quarter inch of shaving. So I wanna make one that works with a half inch. So today we're just going to experiment, mess around and try some things. I don't know if it's gonna work. We're gonna make it out of cheap materials and see how it goes and uh, have a little bit of fun making one of these for a half inch. So I'm gonna start this off with a piece of maple. I and I don't know there. exactly how I'm gonna do this. I'm kind of playing it all along. And I'm gonna start with uh, this three quarter inch piece. This will be the cheek of either side of the plane. And uh, I wanna figure out how much space do I actually need. So I need to know the angle of the iron, where the wedge is going to go, where the uh, wedge pin is going to go, and uh, what's the bed on it. And so uh, there's a lot of little layout here and there's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, this will be a bevel up low angle plane. Uh, it works a little bit better for that application but uh, in this yeah. case uh, I just need to slow down and work through this uh, take it step by step don't overdo it don't do it too fast and make sure you lay it out the way you want it to be now that we've figured out the layout we need to actually start cutting this to shape and size so I'm gonna trim it down to length and then draw a shape on here and get it to uh, something that looks like this and there is no right or wrong to that I just want to make it something that's about the right size um, I also want to make it a little bit shorter because these are I think about an inch and a half and I want to make it only about two inches taller so we're going to be trimming this down and getting blocks that are about the right size. So I'm going to be cutting out two of these. One of them will be the master and the other one will be the second one. So they'll have uh, the two sides of the body. So once we get one of them um, cut to length, then we can cut it to the appropriate height. And uh, now we can start figuring out what we're going to have for the pin in this. And I decided to go with a brass pin rather than a uh, wooden one. And why is that? Because I had some brass laying around. A wooden one would work fine. Uh, brass is a little more durable and long lasting, but in all honesty, it doesn't, long lasting isn't terribly important to this. I'm going to draw a test hole because I want to make sure I have a really nice tight fit. Um, a test hole is, is key and important. Make sure that everything works out well. Anytime you're actually putting a dowel into a hole, uh, always One. test it. So we're going to figure out where we want this hole to be in the body, clamp the two of them together, and then drill the hole um, through both of them. And in doing this, I accidentally split out the backside, and I thought, oh, that looks horrible. And then I realized, hmm, I might be able to do something with that. This other little piece, that is the sole that will be going down. It's ever so slightly wider than the chisel is, and uh, that gives you a little bit of lateral movement um, in between. So we need to make a bed on it. So I drew the angle on there. Uh, the angle really isn't terribly important. It just needs to be a low angle. Now that we have the bed in place, we can find out exactly where the pin needs to go. I want to have about a quarter inch or so, an eighth inch underneath the pin to the chisel. That will give me enough room for the wedge. Um, I moved it a little bit farther away because I wanted to experiment with it, and I wish I had gone a little bit closer, um, a quarter inch or a little bit less. And so then this can drive in and go through both pieces. Um, and that will be the wedge that comes through here. You can see the split out on the other side where I was like, hmm, I don't know. Hmm. The other pin that's on there is the second, um, is the is the bed. Um, and so the, the bed shape. that we have in the, the middle piece, as well as extends up onto that pin. So rather than putting in another piece of wood to be extend the bed, um, I just decided to put in another pin. And you'll see how that comes out here in a little bit. So then I drew on there uh, what the shape should look like, uh, something like this. Uh, there's no right or wrong to it, and I was kind of experimenting and playing with different things and seeing how small could I actually make this and still make it functional. Keeping the two of them clamped together and pinned together, you can come in and shape them down with a chisel and uh, get them close to where you want. Using spoke shaves, rasps, and files allow you to come in and detail it together. And as long as you keep them together, these two will be the exact same. So later on when we separate them and put the bed in, uh, they, they still work out really well. It ended up being kind of like a, a mouse shape, and I wasn't quite sure how that came about. Um, originally, I was just kind of making it a wedge, and I thought, oh, let's do something a little more than a wedge. Let's actually kind of shape this into something, put a few curves into it, and then it just turned into a mouse. 
well, I guess. <laughs> we can put in the two pieces for the sole. One of them is the front of the mouth, and it's just square, and the other one has the, the bed, the wedge. Um, now, normally, I would probably do this with uh, something a little bit stronger than a five-minute epoxy, but because we were shooting the video um, and had to get it all done in the, the one day, um, I needed to get it glued up, and five-minute epoxy is fantastic for that. I probably use a PVA. Uh, my go-to is Elmer's Wood Glue Max. And uh, we can clamp it up, set it aside, and the nice thing about the 5-minute epoxy is you come back to it about 20-30 minutes later and it's good to go. We're going to clean off of the excess on the bottom and you can clamp it in. Now anytime you're going to be clamping a plane in, uh, you need to make sure it's supported. And you can see I put those uh, other scraps in there um, that will allow it to support in the, the vise so I'm not going to crush it. Um, otherwise you can put it in a little bit lower so that it's actually clamping the whole sole. Um, but in this case, that's not possible. So putting in those um, protection blocks saves that. We can put the two pins in, and those are going to be proud, and that is perfectly fine. Um, these don't really have much stress or force on it, so for the glue for it, uh, super glue is perfectly fine. <laughs> There's really not going to be anything to that. I'm going to leave it out on the surface, and that will allow me to then smooth it back out and clean it up. I can start with a coarse file and then go down to a fine file and then use this as the, the final finishing of these, the surface. And I, I always love... Uh, filing down brass smooth of the surface. You get this, it just it, it looks good, it feels good, and it's just really kind of cool. Next, I can put in the other pin, and this one uh, was a bit longer. Um, I don't remember why I cut it so much longer, but this one we actually had to cut up with the, the saw to take it down close to flush. I don't want to flush cut it off. I want to get it really close to it so I can come in with the file and then clean it up. And same thing as the other one, file it up, clean it up, and there you can see that blow out. Mm, I wonder what I'm going to do with that. Oh well. <laughs> Next up, we need to make a wedge. And so I need to figure out how wide is the mouth. And so I'm marking that on a board and then drawing a wedge. What is the wedge angle? It really doesn't matter. I just make it an angle about that. Um, if you really want to get picky about it, you can. Some people will say five degrees is exact and some will say four degrees is so much better. And I say, yeah, make it about this. Um, and just make a wedge. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything special. Start with making the wedge and then you can pretty it up. I need to plane it down so that it will fit in the body in between the two sides, uh, but still have a little bit of movement. I don't want it to pinch up really tightly. So I'm going to mark it off with a marking gauge and then come in and cut it down close to it. And then we'll come in and plane the surface smooth again. And uh, working with little things is often um, difficult. You have to be very, very careful that you don't break them. Uh, they can be hard to hold on to. And so you get kind of creative in how you hold and clamp things in. So now that we have the wedge in, we can actually try the chisel and make sure that it fits in. In this case, the wedge goes too far and hits the front of the mouth, so we got to trim it back. That's one of the things about just making a wedge is just make the wedge, and then you can shape it to be what you need later. Make it bigger than it needs to be, and you can work with that. So let's trim it back and then make sure it works, and then we can put a little angle on it to... Uh, discharge the chip up and this one it doesn't really matter quite as much that the chip needs to move up because it's going to be glued right back down um, but uh, you still want to have a little bit of an angle on there and so let's actually make sure that this works and make sure that everything's in there and uh, I was actually rather happy with how this um, functioned it was pretty quick and easy that it slides in and you can push it forward you get this little curl you pull it back now you have the chip on there you can glue back in you can see I didn't hold it down quite um, as hard as I need to right at the end it peeled back up um, so let's give it another try and just make sure that it wasn't that and uh, just my hands and in this one it actually works out perfectly I get it up in there and then we pull it back and you can see you have that curl you can put a screw behind and then glue this back down and that's the whole purpose of this hiding fasteners <laughs> so after this it's all about the finishing the detail the smoothing it's, it's a functional plane you don't need anything more but as humans we like things to be pretty and so we're going to do the rest with files and rasps and clean it up and smooth the edges i could put chamfers on it i could put indents for the fingers and try all sorts of little things this is the point where you can get creative and try new things and experiment and don't be afraid to do something because, oh well, uh, this only took an hour or two to put together and if I don't really like it, I could make a whole other one. It's rather simple. I'm going to hit everything with a 400 grit sandpaper. This kind of clogs the pores and that will actually pull the, uh, the boiled linseed oil a little deeper into it. With the maple, you're always having to be a little more careful because it will want to get blotchy, but on something this small, the blotchiness isn't quite as uh, apparent and so I'm not really worrying about that. Plus, this is just an experiment, just a toy, something to play with. Uh, so I'm not really oh, caring about it being absolutely perfect. But the one thing I realized is that I've got that blow out there. Man, that looks like an eye on a mouse. 
hmm, we need to uh, get a little creative with it. So I grabbed the V tool and put a little smile on it. And uh, this is one of those fun things where you can just experiment, try something new. Uh, do I like it? Do I not like it? I don't know. I really don't. But uh, it was very pleasing to me. And when a plane smiles back at you, you can't help but smile. And there you go. A happy little hand plane. <laughs> and it works. It really does. Um, so we can set it in here, put the, the wedge in, slide it down. Um, you want the iron to be sticking out a little bit more than you normally want because you want a fairly thick shaving on this. You don't want to see through it. Um, you want something that will actually hide the iron behind it. Um, so, yeah, there. That's the, the chisel plane. Uh, really simple, kind of fun, makes a shaving, and works. So if you want a half-inch version, there you go. Or you could just get the original quarter inch, which is crazy expensive. Oh yeah, lots of fun. So there you have it. Uh, this was really a prototype. I was kind of experimenting with it and seeing if I could make it any smaller. And I could. If I, if I made the distance from the pin to the plane a little bit less, I could probably about half that distance and make this about a quarter inch shorter. Um, I wouldn't need to make it quite as big at the back, and I could I could change things around a little bit. I think I'd like to make the wedge a little bit longer so that I could put a hook on the end to eject it. Um, but as a prototype, it works out very well. Is it a tool that I'm ever going to use? Probably not. And if you don't know what it is, I have a whole video on this little cute thing um, and actually talking through what is it, why would it be used, and what in the world is it for. Uh, yeah, uh, if you like the idea of hidden fastenedures, nails and screws, then this might be a very useful tool. Otherwise, um, it's kind of not. So <laughs> yeah, fun experiment playing with things and uh, enough people asked for me to make a half inch version that there you go half inch version because everybody likes to make happy little wood curls you need a happy little plane so what things could i have done better what could i modify to make it even more cool let me know those down in the comments down below i read through all the comments and i get a lot of great ideas from there if you have any other thoughts like that comments snide remarks or even just want to put comment down below thank you that actually helps out the channel anytime you hit comment or you like share subscribe those things help the channel and keep us going and it means a lot it really does it keeps us going gets us in more in front of more people helps the channel to grow and it's a great way to help us out if you want to take it one step farther you can actually see all the people scrolling over here they are the patrons on patreon and without patrons and members here on the channel uh, we wouldn't exist we are completely sponsored by the viewers and thank you for that that means more than i can say i like being able to say what i want to say and not what some business or company wants me to sell so if you like that think about becoming a patron or becoming a member you can click the little join button down there and find out more or click the uh, patreon in link in the description down below i think i'll do it for now and until next time have a wonderful day well you know what they say if you ever blow something out and make a problem i'll just turn it into a happy little accident <laughs>